So let's put SQL Server into the mix here and talk about how we build a BI system, a, an implementation, whatever you want to call it, and involve SQL Server in it. Okay? Because it fits perfectly inside here. Okay? Remember from the last video, we talked about the typical BI implementation. It had four parts. It had the data entry systems, the data warehouse, your enterprise reporting, and then the training on how to use that reporting. Right? All right, well, let's kind of put this into what it looks like if we were to build machines. Right? Over here, we've got our, oh gosh, Scott. Uh, we've got our data entry system. So this might be a SQL server. Uh, this might be an Oracle uh, ticketing system. Uh, this could be a DB2 um, green screen data entry system, right? SQL server runs the, the website, for example. Now we bring this into the data warehouse. So they all get copied into the data warehouse. And then we have our enterprise reporting. And our enterprise reporting can go directly just through the data warehouse or depending on how we may have it configured, that person, uh, that reporting system may also go back to the individual data entry systems. That would be the most common way to do this. And then, you know, maybe uh, learn it first for some of your training needs. Right? <laughs> but that would be kind of the four uh, pieces of the puzzle. Now let's map this. Let me go to the next screen here. Think of the four core products of the SQL Server. All right, so let me ask you, you, you probably know this already, but a little thinking here. What are the four parts of SQL Server? Can you name them off your head? Well, the one that most people think about when we say SQL Server is technically called the database engine. It is SQL Server. It's the databases. It's where you do your data entry. Um, you know, it's where you put your databases. Okay? But the other three would be analysis services, reporting services, and integration services, right? Those are the four key parts of the SQL Server implementation. Okay, that's what comes on the CD, the DVD, the ISO, however you got yours. Uh, so matching it up down here at the bottom, you could see that these guys over here would be the database engine. Analysis services will be our data warehouse. Reporting services would be our reporting solution. What's the one missing? Yeah, we're missing SSIS. Well, remember, we need a tool to copy the data to import and export, right? This is what SSIS is going to do. It's going to be the tool that helps us get the data out of our data entry systems and into the data warehouse. We'll talk about what ETL means later, what extract, transform, load. Um, so don't worry about that, but that's what its purpose is. It is the data movement component. Okay. All right, so the database engine. Database engine's job is to be a relational database management system. Okay, and I'm going to abbreviate this on RDBMS. Uh, you should probably have a fair understanding of what this term relational means. Um, if you don't, let me just kind of give you the 30 second guide to relational systems. Um, and I'm just going to talk from a, a design standpoint here. I'm not going to talk about atomicity or any of the, the other properties of relational databases here. Um, in a relational system, every transaction is logged. We're dealing with tables, columns, and rows. Um, that's, that's actually important because when we work with a data warehouse, we might not be dealing with tables, columns, and rows. Um, so relational system, when I say relational, I want you to think a table with columns that has rows in it. Okay? So for the time being, that's good enough. Okay? This is great for data entry. It's also great for what's called a relational data warehouse. Okay? And more on what a relational data warehouse is in a couple of videos from now. So like the next video, we're gonna talk about what data warehouses are. So kind of stick with me on that. Okay, so the database engine is perfect for the data entry. It's perfect for relational data warehouses. And it even has a job scheduling engine that we're going to use quite 
uh, frequently as DBAs and developers. Now the analysis services, what is this? This is a multi-dimensional database management system. Okay? Strangely enough, nobody abbreviates that. Okay? Uh, it's perfect for the multi-dimensional data warehouse. Uh-oh, this is a pretty cool little term, multi-dimensional data warehouse. And we're going to cover it, okay? Next couple of videos, we're going to delve on into what that exactly is. Reporting services, right? Your users come in and they hit their report server. They go by an HTTP browser. They request the report, uh, generally through uh, either uh, Internet Explorer, uh, through an intranet site, or through Report Builder, which is a tool that we're going to use a little bit later. And then in, behind the scenes, the report server then says, hey, I'm going to go get the data from that SQL server, or I need to go get some of the data from that access database, or I need to get some of this data down here uh, from a Sybase system, for example. Okay? So the report server handles the incoming request renders the report and sends it back to the user, right? It's enterprise reporting. Okay? That's what SQL reporting services is all about, okay? Uh, the integration services, I like this graphic. This comes from the MSDN site. It is the ETL tool, okay? Extract, transform, and load for integrating the data and loading data warehouses. Right? It loads everything from the data entry system into the data warehouse. And I like this graphic. This comes straight out of the books online. Uh, and it shows you here's the database engine, here's reporting services, and here's analysis services. And integration services can be used by everyone. Okay. All right, let's now move on to talking about what a data warehouse is, what's a data mart, what's the difference between the two.